true to say that there are three main strands of conclusions we reached in this review, and some of those um, derive from innovative analytical methods. And I'm sorry that none of the people involved in that could be here today. One of the things that strikes you most about the combined authority area in which um, James leads is that the geography is different from that of other mayors. It includes really in the metro mayor type or for everybody else. But if you start, when we started to unpick this area, we realised that there are in fact three economies, broadly Cambridgeshire and South Cambridgeshire, Peterborough and its environs, and then the and then the Fens. Of course, they've got fuzzy boundaries, but in big picture terms, our view is that these areas have different challenges, and those require different solutions. The second strand we picked up is based on a novel piece of analysis. There's been work in Cambridge over a number of years, which has prompted the conclusion that growth in public sector employment in Cambridge since the financial crisis has been stronger in the south of the country than is suggested by the ONS BREDS data. And, that, and for this project, we took this methodology across the whole combined authority area and actually found that this growth was widespread. Now, on one level, of course, this is a bit puzzling, and consequently, we're having ongoing discussions with the ONS about these discrepancies, and it's fair to say that both we and they can see weaknesses in their approach, but the overall conclusion is that this area of combined authority has been pretty fast growing and probably faster growing than the, than the national statistics suggest. <coughs> the third strand is also innovative. It's again derived from established futures work, also led from the university, and that looks at possible future scenarios for the area and models them in the terms of both land use and transportation. It considers then the revealed preferences, sorry about revealed preferences, a great economist term, the location choices which household, households have. And so it's trying to tell us something about welfare, not just about transport patterns. In more purely economic terms, its outputs are about business costs, commuting patterns, and rents. And this approach has been very powerful in the past, challenging and guiding policy in the southern part of the area. And the main conclusion to emerge from this analysis is that if the growth of the combined authority areas continue, particular particularly the area around Cambridge, able to continue attracting internationally leading research-based industry. The transport network is going to require major investment. Now, we're talking about an area of the UK which accounts for just 1.37% of the UK's GBA, but the nature of the business activity that's attractive, international nature, means that this is more important than that, than that figure suggests, and we have suggested strongly it is a nationally important region. It both has a strong entrepreneurship culture of its own and pulls in international businesses. And it sits, of course, where two growth corridors meet. The east-west growth arc, going over to Oxford. You're not really allowed to mention Oxford in Cambridge, but occasionally you can get away with it. <laughs> and also the London's Stansted Cambridge Innovation Corridor. But we can't take the robust growth that's been there recently for granted. Familiar to any business person in this room, that high housing costs are an increasing issue for firms seeking to attract workers, and indeed for young people who've grown up in the area and would like to settle there. And the future's work suggested clearly that in the absence of greater ambition for both housing and transport infrastructure, the aim of doubling GBA in the, in the area would not, only, would not be achieved, as employment growth would be forced to tail off by travel constraints and indeed costly housing pushing up business costs. So the recommendations about planning for enough housing and for a major upgrade, carefully prioritised in transport infrastructure, are particularly important. Cambridge, of course, has two key problems in this regard, if one of them is a problem. One, of course, is the green belt, where you have to have very strong reasons um, to, uh, to, to move into the green belt. But the second, and really difficult to resolve, is the last mile issue. The, the narrow streets of the historic centre simply don't lend themselves to a form of mass transport that runs above ground. And that's why we have supported the exploratory work for the Cambridge Metro, however ambitious that will sound to outsiders. We expressed a strong concern in the report for what is built as well as how much. Cambridge already has some good new developments around the edge, and it's got the land value to support good new development. So we could really have some exemplar places. But just as importantly, the income inequalities within Cambridge suggest that we also need innovative forms of affordable housing, and I know that James is particularly keen on this. So if we can get this development done well in the right places, it will not only help people in Cambridge, but it will also enrich the informal networks which 
David tells us all is such an important driver of the entrepreneurial activity we had. Now, I've talked a lot about Cambridge, perhaps too much. I should say we did also get out of Cambridge. Indeed, I, I went up to Wisbech, which I'm afraid I'd never been to before, to realise just how hampered it is by the lack of rail linkage and the evident inadequacies of the A47 to and from Peterborough. It's clear that market towns in that area, and I had this reinforced, I was having lunch today with a number of uh, voluntary groups in the Cambridge area, and they talked about something which I really picked up on in the review, which was buses. Um, people from Ramsey talking about the buses to Huntington being cut, and the challenge that's going to make for people trying to get to employment from Ramsey. 25% of the population of the combined authority area lives in market towns. Connecting those people better with education and employment opportunities is really vital. And we wanted to look beyond the purely economic, the housing, um, the infrastructure, to ways to shape development which consider the well-being of individuals and communities. We were supported particularly by Dame Carol Black, one of the commissioners, who, talk, who, who has helped us with the recommendations about workplace health. And we've also suggested that an opportunity area for health be established in the north of the area. Turning to Cambridge, while higher education has a strong reputation in Cambridge with its two very different universities, I should say I used to chair Anglia Ruskin, so it's very dear to my heart. Peterborough, one of the biggest places in the UK without a university, would benefit from a different type of university again, more closely linked to business in the area. And then right across the area, at the other end of education, a better start for children from more deprived areas would be key to unlocking their individual potential. The last part of our recommendations is really important. It concerns governance, and it's good to say this with the minister here. Given the importance of this area, greater fiscal devolution more akin to that given to some other metro mayors would be a very natural step. Because Cambridge is nationally important, it doesn't mean it all has to be run from the centre. But equally, if this is going to deliver the most value, the authorities right across the combined authority area need to be able to work smoothly and constructively together. There's up and down. So I'm conscious that this review looks for big changes in plans for the area, and I'm <coughs> very conscious it poses big challenges, and I think big choices. And we've, of course, put this forward in the review, but to some extent, it's a choice for the people of the area, whether they want to go on and, and, and capitalise on the growth they've already had and grow further, or whether they want to revert to perhaps where Cambridge was 50 or 60 years ago and say, no, actually, we don't want to grow anymore. We want to stay a, a small, we want to stay a small, a small place. So ultimately, I, I think it is a choice for people, um, but it's a long-term choice because it's a long-term choice and difficult choices. These are areas where politicians often find it hard to tread, and that's why we're so pleased to have the support of the mayor in putting forward these challenging recommendations. It's been quite a piece of work uh, chairing this review. On some areas I'd like to have delved deeper, particularly perhaps around affordable housing. But I've enjoyed finding parts of the um, combined authority area I haven't previously visited. Although just in passing, I'd like to say I wouldn't like to drive the A47 very often, and I feel very sorry for people who do. Um, just to finish, I'm incredibly grateful to lots of people who've worked on the review, been very generous with their time and comments, many in this room, but there are too many to list. And in any case, I'm sure that you're all very eager now to hear from Greg Clark, the MP for Tunbridge Wells since 2005, and now Secretary of State with a somewhat unpronounceable bees. Thanks. And perhaps significantly, exactly, they were unpronounceable. And um, significantly for, for today, Greg is, of course, a Cambridge graduate, but I'm trying not to hold that against him. Thank you, Kate, and thanks for inviting me. It's great to see um, so many very familiar faces um, from uh, Cambridge and Peterborough uh, and beyond, uh, indeed, uh, in the, the room. Um, the, uh, the report talks uh, about uh, this being a project of national importance, uh, and I agree. Um, not only is the area uh, a place of uh, national and indeed international importance, uh, but the the fact that you've taken the lead in having such a, uh, a well-informed uh, and comprehensive analysis uh, of the, the strengths and opportunities uh, of the area 
uh, I know is something that is being uh, closely studied, um, even with a degree of, um, of envy from some other places who, uh, who perhaps wish that they'd had the initiative uh, first. So congratulations on that. It's a very uh, substantial piece of work. Um, I think the, the richness uh, with which the review uh, is conducted uh, tells, the, tells the story uh, of the area. And it's a, a, a story of extraordinary uh, development from its historical development uh, to, as Case just mentioned, uh, its very different economic geographies, uh, its sexual strengths. Uh, and I think to bring these all together uh, in this study uh, is, uh, is a real testament to the, uh, to the work uh, of the Commission. Now, uh, the, the review makes a, uh, I would say, a compelling case that Cambridgeshire and Peterborough uh, have an enormous amount to contribute uh, to the industrial strategy. Um, personally, I need no convincing uh, of this in my previous roles, as many people uh, in, the, in the room know. Uh, I uh, was uh, behind the development of, first of all, the, the Greater Cambridge uh, City Deal, and more recently, of course, the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough uh, Devolution Deal. Uh, and these deals uh, represent uh, a significant move away from what many of us in this room, and certainly Kate and I have talked about, uh, which was a, the best part of a century uh, in which the direction, the flow of power, was from places like Cambridgeshire and Peterborough to Westminster and Whitehall. You know, little by little, year by year, power was taken away from places, power and discretion, uh, and invested in central government. Uh, and so with the, uh, the, the beginnings of devolution, I think there was the, the recognition that this had not only gone too far, but needed to be reversed. Uh, and actually that the differences between places uh, was a source of strength to those places and also to the national economy. And to try to have a uniform national approach that didn't take into account uh, the differences, and the assets, uh, and the challenges uh, that different places in the country uh, took uh, would be bound to underplay our strengths as a nation uh, as well as the individual places. So uh, I'm, uh, no one could be more thrilled uh, than I to, to see uh, to James uh, here to, uh, to, to speak on behalf of Cambridgeshire and Peterborough as the first uh, elected mayor. And James, of course, is going to uh, say uh, some words uh, in a moment. But I just wanted to uh, give a, set out a few thoughts uh, on why this area matters so much uh, to the nation, uh, the challenges that it faces, uh, and where we go from, from here. Uh, first of all, to, to start with the opportunities. You know, the economic opportunities in both Cambridgeshire and Peterborough uh, are clear. Uh, the devolution deal uh, set a target to double the size of the local economy over 25 years. And if there's ever a place where uh, that is clearly uh, within grasp, uh, it's Cambridgeshire and Peterborough, because the, uh, the history and the experience uh, has surpassed all expectations uh, in the past and can clearly be done so uh, again. Now, as Kate said, uh, clearly the area uh, is, uh, is three places uh, rather than a single uniform place, Greater Cambridge, uh, Peterborough, and the Fens. Each has its own areas, but very exciting areas uh, of potential to be seized. To start with Cambridge, um, many cities in the world uh, can claim to have world-leading scientists, uh, but Cambridge, and only Cambridge, can claim to be the place where the term scientist was first coined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, today, the home of Newton, Darwin, uh, and uh, Hawking is still hotbed, uh, as the world knows, of innovation and invention. And as the review rightly notes, Cambridge has the highest number of patents per person of anywhere in the UK. Uh, the area is home to one of the world's greatest biomedical uh, and technology clusters, where the innovation uh, that is produced uh, in the area is changing the lives of people all across the, the world. Uh, it's almost certain uh, that uh, in, uh, in your smartphone, uh, the, uh, within it will be technology uh, developed uh, in Cambridge, uh, and that is true for every country uh, in the world. Um, Cambridge achievements are, achievements are outstanding and they're also well known. Um, but in Peterborough, 
um, I think a somewhat quieter revolution at this point. With nearly 200,000 people, uh, Cape uh, is, uh, as everyone in this room knows, the fourth fastest growing city in the UK, uh, with strengths in areas like uh, engineering, as well as in environmental goods and services, in many cases professional uh, services. Uh, it is a uh, place that is well positioned uh, in terms of some of the, uh, the growing industries uh, of the future. Uh, it was only, I think, three years ago in which it was awarded the title of World Smart City, meeting more than 260 entries uh, from 52 countries uh, worldwide. Uh, and then, of course, the defence, um, home to 50%, half of the country's uh, grade one agricultural land, a true national asset. And the defence offer not only natural capital, but huge potential uh, in the innovation which has always been there from the uh, from the draining of the vent itself, uh, an astonishing uh, achievement of engineering uh, and uh, innovation uh, to create this most fertile uh, of areas, and through its farmers, through its growers, uh, and food uh, processors, uh, and scientists, the, the opportunity for innovation uh, in agriculture, uh, and of course food and drink uh, is our biggest manufacturing uh, industry. Uh, and I know through the work that we've done on the industrial strategy, it's probably an area uh, that is uh, is more innovative than most of the uh, most happy people in the country appreciate. It is a real hotbed of innovation, and so I think the combination uh, of the uh, the three areas uh, is a very strong one, um, and in many ways uh, complementary. Now, uh, Kate mentioned that market towns, um, very important centres uh, of trade. Uh, a society, uh, the uh, weaved, uh, uh, woven in amongst the uh, the, uh, the landscape, uh, I think again is a big part uh, of the strengths of the area. But as the area is uh, is very candid uh, in noting, there are some uh, some real challenges and some real risks uh, facing the area. Uh, and I just want to mention uh, two of them. The view goes into more detail. Um, obviously, one of the uh, the symptoms of success uh, is the, the challenges uh, for congestion uh, and uh, infrastructure, whether that is uh, transportation or housing uh, that comes. It is a symptom uh, of uh, success. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why the combined authority and the, and the mayoralty, I know that uh, James has given particular uh, uh, emphasis, made a particular priority uh, since his election uh, last year, uh, into the transport options uh, for the area. Uh, and the second of these things that I mentioned, uh, housing, housing affordability uh, in particular. The particular challenge uh, for the, the south uh, of the county, but actually right across the, uh, the area. And I think this review uh, is right uh, in drawing attention to that if we are to be able to reap all of the opportunities uh, that the area uh, has. It's no good since the devolution deal uh, involved investment of 170 million pounds uh, into a Cambridge-produced uh, smartphone there. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, to illustrate the uh, <laughs> pervasiveness. Um, the review raised some uh, important issues, but it is the uh, it, it is the uh, the platform on which to uh, to design solutions and to implement them. Uh, so, uh, where do we go from? Um, well, I think if there's one thing. Uh, that I would uh, point out that has such a strong resonance with the, the industrial strategy that we uh, published uh, last year uh, to, uh, to address the opportunities and the challenges uh, of the nation. Uh, it's this uh, aspect of the place, the distinctiveness uh, of each place. And I think this uh, review, uh, if it's acted upon, I think positions Cambridgeshire and Peterborough uh, very well to be one of the exemplar places in the whole country uh, to show how the distinctiveness uh, of both the opportunities and the challenges uh, can be turned uh, into action. Uh, I hope that this we, uh, the work that's gone into the review uh, will uh, result uh, in a local industrial strategy that can be agreed uh, with uh, the government so that we can jointly back uh, its recommendations and to put them uh, into effect. Uh, and we should get all of that straight away so that we can uh, agree it uh, very quickly. 
So I'd like to, to thank uh, Kate and the Commission uh, for this very important uh, piece of work uh, on a part of the country that really matters to the whole country. Uh, for me, this is uh, a place uh, of constant excitement, constant discovery, constant uh, opportunity. Uh, many, well known as the area is, uh, there is a richness that is still not as widely known uh, as it should be. Uh, Kate mentioned Wisbeach. Wisbeach is a, uh, is a town uh, that I've got to know that actually I think doesn't have the, the prominence uh, in the, uh, the national consciousness that it uh, deserves. Um, uh, and whether it's its heritage, whether it's its uh, architecture, whether what its potential uh, in what it can give uh, to the whole area, if uh, some of these uh, connections, including transport, uh, are put in place, uh, I think has a, uh, has a great deal to offer. Uh, if you think about uh, what has happened uh, in Cambridge and Cambridgeshire uh, over the last uh, 10 and 20 years, uh, people up and down the country will uh, recognise and probably refer to the Cambridge phenomenon. Uh, but my view is that the, uh, the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough uh, phenomenon uh, has many uh, decades to run, many uh, opportunities uh, and many gifts to give the national and international economy. Uh, and I think this review uh, provides an excellent foundation on uh, which to start to read. So thank you very much indeed for asking me to come today. Well, thank you, Greg, and uh, uh, thanks for that uh, uh, speech. And also thanks to Ben Kate Barker and Mike Emmerich through the Metro Dynamics team uh, and everybody who was involved in uh, this outstanding report uh, that gives us a significant evidence base uh, to prove to government uh, the strength of our economy. Um, and I'm going to use the time that I have now to softly challenge you, Greg, and hopefully to strongly challenge government as well to back up the findings of this, uh, this report. Sitting here looking out into the room, I see faces that I see uh, most every week of my life, and uh, uh, the delight in that, in that is that every political uh, elected leader is here, uh, every uh, part of the county uh, is represented, and I think that, uh, that this, this report challenges us as political leaders, uh, as well as the government, to work together for the, uh, the greater good of the entirety of the county. Uh, and it's a kind of authority system uh, that allows us to have that whole county, whole vision for the entirety of Cambridge and Peterborough. Now clearly, we believed as politicians that we knew exactly what was going on in our county. We live there, uh, we see it on a daily basis, we understand the issues in each of the districts and city of Peterborough uh, and across the county of Cambridgeshire. But what Kate has put together here is a significant document that looks very keenly at each area and proved to us what we expected was that our economy was growing stronger than government thought. Uh, it proved to us what we really knew, that we weren't building enough houses uh, to, uh, to solve our housing crisis. And it proved to us what we feel and, and all of us suffer every day which is that our transport network is simply not adequate uh, to, um, to feed the growth of our economy. The reality is, Greg, that uh, there are 70,000 homes in the local plan, and I've been asked by the devolution document to build 100,000 homes above that, and our road network and rail network simply can't cope with what we have uh, <coughs> at the time. We've put forward significant plans to do the A10, the A47, which Dave K. Parker mentioned several times, not just because it's a slow road, but it's an extraordinarily dangerous road as well. Uh, and uh, potential for an M11 North, we've mentioned, and of course the metro for the south of the council. Unless we are bold in our vision, we cannot deliver for the people of our council. We know, as, uh, uh, as uh, politicians in Cambridge and Peterborough, and I know that you are aware as well, that currently Cambridge and Peterborough is paying £5 billion a year into the UK economy. That's a significant uh, uh, amount of money, and we also <coughs> know that, uh, that we are not really getting our share back, 
I could be uh, mean to the Northern Powerhouse and to the Midlands Engine, but I'll be polite to those. Uh, but I will say that it's Eastern Enterprise that's driving the UK economy, and it's Eastern Enterprise that is financing what sort of things are going on in the North. And uh, we need our share too. Because what's proven from this document is if we do not put our share or get our share for investment into uh, our economy, it will begin to go backwards. <coughs> And I think that's too big a risk for government to take. It's certainly too big a risk for us to ignore. I am a pro-growth mayor. My job is to be pro-growth. I campaign very strongly on a growth agenda. I know that uh, to create that growth for government, to get that one and a half billion GBA plus per year extra, um, that we have to invest. We've put forward significant uh, uh, policies. Uh, land value cap has been mentioned in, in the paper, and we know that that's a way to develop not just more housing, but to create more affordable housing. And our policies <coughs> include uh, uh, creating houses on the market for first time buyers for £100,000. We believe very strongly that, uh, that that can be done through the land value cap process. And we believe that gives people the opportunity to buy houses they can actually afford rather than ones that they're being told by the local economy are affordable when they clearly want. The Merrill Development Corporation that could deliver these carbon villages must be something that we work together on, uh, but it's something that government can help us with. It's a power that government can give us to deliver not just affordable housing, but to deliver business growth as well. Tax incremental funding on business growth on their development corporations allows us to raise finance necessary to pay for metro and for other infrastructure projects. It's something, again, that as politicians we have to work together uh, to make sure that we prove to government that we should put it together a united front. But it's something where I feel that government can have a direct influence on the ability of the combined authority in Cambridge and Peterborough to deliver what government costs us to do. Further devolution of skills is extraordinarily important to the project that we have. We have a huge skill shortage in uh, Cambridgeshire and Peterborough. In Peterborough alone, 13% of the population do not have any uh, skills at all, and, uh, and it's affecting our economy uh, uh, as a whole. Investment into Peterborough University is imperative for the growth of the economy in the north of Cambridgeshire. The effect that a High quality technical university producing people into agritech and engineering in particular would have on our economy would be extraordinarily positive and it's something we are determined to achieve. <coughs> we are working already very closely, uh, the city, uh, city council in Peterborough and the Command Authority, on an exceptional site in the centre of the city and we believe that it would have a positive effect and it's not just on the economy around Peterborough but on the central Peterborough economy as well. And, uh, and I know that uh, it was part of the devolution deal, uh, and I'm sure the government will support us uh, in getting the, uh, the degree of working powers we need for this university. So in short, what I believe that this report gives us is a sound evidence base for the success of our economy. It shows and proves to government that we can achieve, are achieving, and will achieve for our economy. We have no lack of ambition to drive our economy forward. We have no lack of ambition to provide the houses that are necessary for the people in our county. And we have no lack of ambition to provide the infrastructure to deliver the growth that government needs. So again, I will thank you for coming, Greg. Uh, and I will ask you to work alongside us, the politicians of Cambridgeshire and Peterborough, to help us to deliver for government and for the national economy.